Okay guys, this is my last video, hopefully, on Tacoma Takeover 3. I know I posted a couple others earlier, but I really wanted to do like an impressions video, just some thoughts on the event. It seemed like it was just too much to kind of tack it onto the end of the highlights video since I figured I might be rambling for a bit. I know this video won't appeal to everyone, but for me, it just seemed like something that I wanted to do because uh, I hadn't been to a, a real Kendama event before, and I know many of you who are watching this maybe haven't been to one either. And, you know, I just think it's fun to share certain aspects of the experience that aren't necessarily conveyed by a highlight video. Because, you know, I, did, I didn't catch everything. I didn't video all that much, only a little bit here and there. Uh, the first thing is I, want, I need to confess that I was a little bit skeptical going into the event because some of the initial... Some of the information and planning seemed very last minute, so there was a concern on my part, not not really that I know anything, that things wouldn't kind of come together very well. But what it ended up being was, it was a little more casual perhaps than some other of the really big events like MKO, and I think that was great. The whole v casual vibe kind of came together at the event itself, and I had a great time, so big shout out and props to Ernie for putting it all together. He did a great job, he really did a great job. The venue itself at University of Puget Sound was super nice, like, he, that's a great, it was a great place. The university was beautiful. The rotunda that we were in, that big circular building room that we were, was the perfect size and space for the amount of people that were there and it just worked out really great. The weather wasn't ideal, but it wasn't terrible either. There were some spots of pretty heavy rain, but then it kind of stopped raining, and in the end, it was wa it was Northwest Washington weather, which, you know, it was fine, it was good. Now, the event itself was only one day, which has its pros and cons, I think. One day was great because kind of everything happened at once. It, it made it so probably some people could go that maybe couldn't make it there the day before or on Sunday. So that was kind of cool. It, it made it easier for me because it was close enough for me to drive to, making it one day that I could just be there the whole day. Uh, but on the other hand, it made it really crammed, packed full of stuff. It was just nonstop and kind of exhausting by the end. I can't imagine some of the guys who were in the open and freestyle and doubles ladders that just had to keep going all day long. They did an amazing job. So I thought that was pretty interesting and I can see how a multi-day event has its benefits as well. But I do like the one day and I think it fit well for this particular event, so that was cool. The contests and ladders and everything I thought were really good. We had, you had the beginner and intermediate speed ladders, which I think is a great way to go. We th flew through those ladders pretty fast at the very beginning. The open division, I think, was the, I think the open division was the only one you had to pay for. I think everything else was free. But the open division was a pretty big bracket. There was a lot of competitors and some really amazing competitors. You know, there's a lot of sponsor, sponsored and pro players there. So the competition was super high and some of the tricks were really good. So it was a really fun thing to watch. Some of these people go head to head and some upsets happened and it was really good. I, I liked it. It was kind of a standard open division though. Something unique to Tacoma Takeover is the doubles ladder. And the doubles ladder I thought was just fantastic. Really entertaining to watch. Super unique. I don't think I've seen it at another contest, and it really adds a level of kind of technic. Uh, it's just really impressive to see these players that are, have such a high skill level that they can do these impressive tricks with another person. You, they're relying on another person's setup and passing back and forth in such a way that I thought it was great. Each of the battles was exciting. I'd love to see doubles contests at more events. I think they were really great. And the tricks were hard. Yeah, it was cool. Freestyle was interesting. It was kind of, it was an invitational freestyle. So, you know, they were inviting primarily sponsored and pro players or players that, you know, are very high level and, and can do some really good freestyle stuff. And that was a lot of fun to watch as normal. The finals was a three-way battle, which I kind of have mixed feelings about. It's interesting and it wasn't bad. It was cool, but it was amazing to see some of these guys hit some crazy tricks on the stage. And so I really enjoyed it. So overall, I really enjoyed all the, Speed ladders, doubles, open, everything about the contest was pretty good. There was some standard stuff in there, but then the whole Tacoma Takeover 3 thing, they added in some little twists, which was nice. The vibe at the event, the way that the whole thing carried on, again, is kind of in a casual way, was really cool. And Daniel Robinson did most of the, Ernie and Daniel Robinson did most of the emceeing. Uh, and Daniel Robinson did a great job kind of keeping the vibe and the energy and the excitement, like he didn't stop. He didn't let up for a beat. He just kept going in a really great energetic way. And I really appreciate that. I think part of the event success had a lot to do with him, Ernie setting it up, and then Daniel just like being killer on the mic. On the mic. And the DJ, oh, I'm, I'm forgetting his name. 
shoot, I forget the DJ's name. He was great. The music was really good, very tasteful, I think. Kind of wide, widely appealing for the most part. I think everybody enjoyed the music and it really added to the event. It didn't take away. I've seen other events where the music can sometimes take away from the event um, if you have someone not knowing what they're doing. So music was great. I got to meet a bunch of really cool people at the event. Some people that, that I just had interactions with online or maybe some people who watched my videos. And that was amazing. Super cool to meet folks. Uh, weird because, you know, the connection when you're online is just avatars and usernames. It was just it was just really neat to meet people and and kind of hang out. So it was also really neat to to meet some of the pro and sponsored players that I really look forward to meeting. You guys know who you are that I was able to talk to and hang out with. And I really feel like at the end of the day, the whole event, competition, contest, the whole thing is kind of just mainly an excuse to be able to hang out with Kendama people and just have a good time. And honestly, that was the best part of the event for me, hanging out with people, meeting people for the first time that I didn't know, meeting people for the first time that I knew of, that maybe knew of me, but we had never connected and hung out. And that was just a lot of fun. And, and honestly, I can see why going to Kendama events, like that's, that's the main draw. Um, yeah, maybe you wanna win a competition, but like if you're like me and you just, you know, you're, you get stuck on and on the second trick on the intermediate ladder you can still have a great time hanging out with people meeting these you know meeting these world class like champion level players there was there was like five of them there meeting all these aw other awesome pro and sponsored players that have a huge impact on the community it was just a lot of fun so i definitely recommend that if there's a kendama event near you at any time try to go just go and hang out meet some people step out of your comfort zone a little bit and go talk to people just go say hi everyone's super friendly i didn't see anybody there pro sponsor beginner that was unfriendly everybody was willing to talk or one more thing, you know, PNW was there selling kendamas, Seoul kendamas was selling kendamas. I think there were some bonsai kendamas for sale. There was only just a couple vendors. I know some more vendors weren't able to be there, but it still was really neat to be able to, this is the first time I've been in a physical location to be able to buy a kendama directly from a company. And it was neat to have them out there and be able to kind of, I don't know, something about buying a kendama in person at an event, cause I, cause I got a PNW slate. Something about that is really fun. One of the better keepsakes from an event. You remember that kendama from that event. You're able to pick it out. Originally, I didn't think that buying a kendama at an event was the best idea or or whatever, but uh, I think it's pretty cool. So hopefully the next event I go to will have a few more people selling kendamas and stuff. So overall, had a great time, really enjoyed it. Those of you that I saw at the event, I really enjoyed meeting you and hanging out with you. It was super fun. Uh, definitely looking forward to doing it again in the future. Um, if you were at the event and you're watching this video, let me know what part you liked the most about the event or if you've been to a different Kendama event, like what, what was your favorite part? What did you like the most? Maybe you liked uh, the competition the most. Maybe you won a ladder or something, but I'm curious to hear what you guys think. The Kendama event seemed to be getting better and better as the years go on. So I'm curious to see, you know, what new things happen as the sport grows and uh, people continue to enjoy it. So that's it for this video. Let me know if you guys like these kinds of rambling thought videos or not. I'm, I know they don't appeal to everybody, but I figure there's not a lot of harm in just putting it out there. So um, thanks for watching guys. Appreciate it. Talk to you later.